This is the Master Brewers Podcast, brought to you by the Master Brewers Association of the Americas, a volunteer organization dedicated to continually improving the products and processes of our membership since 1887. Let's go! 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 Master Brewers brings you interviews with the industry's best and brightest in brewing science, technology, and operations. This Master Brewers podcast is proudly sponsored by Barnum Mechanical, a full-service design build firm specializing in turnkey process and utility systems for the brewing industry. You know beer. We know breweries. We think in our company that word clarity is not that the one thing you should pursue during lottering, but that some turbidity is actually pretty good because um, you get more zinc and fatty acids into your word. This week on the show, a novel brew house design that strives for cloudy work. Hi, my name is Magdalena Oeschläger. I'm working at Simon Hof Rijeka since January this year. But I did my apprenticeship and my master thesis in the year before that about the fermentation of word with novel word composition. Your article stirs up a long running debate. Let's start off with the pros and cons of work clarity. I don't know if any pros for clarity. I have a lot of facts, actually. You hate it. <laughs> yeah. I, well, we realize that clarity is not that perfect. If you have very clear words, you have less zinc and you have less fatty acids in them, which are very important for your yeast nutrition later on. So we think in our company that word clarity is not that the one thing you should pursue during lottering but that some turbidity is actually pretty good because um, you get more zinc and fatty acids into your wort. You've proposed and tested a, a new approach to wort separation. What sparked the idea for this project at Siemen? The actual approach was to find a way to make lottering um, uh, continuously and not in a batch process because that was the only the only part in the brewing process that wasn't continuous in, in other systems yet. And we tried to make that. And um, then we found out that with this new filter system and the mesh width of 70 micrometer, we actually achieve a much cloudier word. And which, that is good for, for the yeast nutrition later on because you add more zinc and fatty acids to the word because of that. Yeah. Okay. So this is more like a... Like a um, and in fact, that came with it. But the main approach was actually to make a continuous system. Tell us what your mesh filtration system looks like and how it works. The mesh filtration system consists of four modules, which each containing um, a pair of sil- filter sieves. The filter sieves are arranged in, um, in cascades and vertically, not not lying, but they are stand up, and you pack. You pump your mesh between the two filter sieves and um, the separation of the mesh then takes place in the lower segment of the uh, filter discs. So all the solids remain between the filter discs, whereas the liquid passes through and can collect it below in collecting vessels. Um, the sieves rotate, so the mesh is transported into the next segment. And in between the two wheels, um, we have a transition area, and here's where the sparching can take place. So you put all your sparching water between the two wheels, so the mesh can be um, washed out with um, the remaining extract. And then you have the next wheel again, where it, the separation again takes place. So you have sparching and separation at once, and not like in the lotter tan um, after each other. We are more cloudy in our words because we only have the surface filtration in our system we don't have a depth filtration like a lot of ton has so we don't have some cake layers that are formed so the liquid doesn't pass through some grain layers where all the solids are held back 
And that is why we are much cloudier. The first trials you ran had the purpose of quantifying wort solids on the novel brew house at various stages. Talk about what you observed and how that compares to typical solids coming out of both traditional lauder tones and mash filters. Well, we found a lot more solids in our words than in the Lotetan. Um, to make it clear, we have 48 times more solids in our word than a Lotetan word and 21 times more than a mesh filter. Um, this comes mostly from the filtration system itself. Disc pair 1 and 2 shows 11.4 grams per liter of solids while uh, it's getting lower with each wheel. So this pair four only shows 1.9. But in the end, after boiling and word separation um, in the whirlpool and everything, we have eight to nine grams per liter of solids in our word, which is, as I already said, uh, 48 times more than uh, a lot of time and 21 times higher than in a mesh filter word. Your second set of trials analyzed work composition what were the differences compared to conventional work? The most differences that we could find are in um, fatty acids and in zinc. We have 7.5 times more fatty acids in our words than conventional words contain. Especially polyunsaturated fatty acids are much higher like oleic and uh, linoleic um, acids. And the zinc was an average about 0.5 ppm, which is also much higher than in an average lager beer where you have like 0 0.1 to 0 0.15 ppm. Coming up. If we have a lot of fatty acids already in the words, we don't have to, the yeast doesn't have to produce its own sterols. It can just take it up and use it. I'm John Bryce, and you're listening to the Master Brewers Podcast from the Master Brewers Association of the Americas. This episode is brought to you by... ABS Commercial is a full-service brewery and parts outfitter. From our Raleigh headquarters to our Denver office, we proudly offer brew houses and fermenters from three barrels and up... Yeast brinks, boilers, kegs, chillers, triclamp, and other stainless parts, all with the quickest delivery and lead times in the industry. Learn more at abs-commercial.com or call 877-BREW-ABS. ABS Commercial. We are brewers. Here's what's coming up on the Master Brewers calendar. Don't miss the brewery safety webinar July 25th. District St. Paul, Minneapolis joins forces again with the Minnesota Craft Brewers Guild for the 5th Annual Business and Technical Conference July 27th in Duluth. The District Milwaukee Summer Picnic is July 28th at Capitol Brewery in Middleton. The Diastatic is Detection Methods and Control Measures webinar is August 1st. District Philly holds its summer meeting at the Pennsylvania Sam Adams Brewery August 3rd. The annual District Texas Summer Meeting is the weekend of August 3rd in Kerrville. The ASBC MBAA Brewing Summit takes place in San Diego this August. Register at mbaa.com where you can also view the full count of events with more details or find a district meeting near you. Now back to the show. Your paper stated that uh, the biggest zinc reduction occurs in the whirlpool. Talk about why that is and why your settling vessel gets different results. Um, zinc is often connected to polyphenols and other compounds. And so uh, when you uh, use your whirlpool, the compounds um, agglomerate and they go together. And then you can um, just remove the, the, solid, uh, the liquid parts. In our system, the, the agglomeration happens differently because we also boil hops differently in a separate vessel. We don't get those agglomerates that much because the, the compounds of polyphenols and nitrogens are not that much available. And that is why we don't have the reduction of zinc in a, such a great way like other brew houses have it. 
so we get a lot of more lo a lot more sync into our word and finally for the third set of trials you studied yeast metabolism talk about what was observed in regards to yeast cell growth for beer produced on disc filters versus the traditional lauder ton that's been very interesting we could see that the cell growth was pretty much increased from uh, regards to conventional birds. We had a cell growth that was 1.2 to 1.7 times higher than in conventional birds, which also led to faster fermentation. We were done with our main fermentation two to three days earlier than the conventional um, fermentation. I want to talk about ester formation. Grady Hull at New Belgium published a paper in 2008 where they trialed olive oil additions. The common theme here is supplementing unsaturated fatty acids as an alternative to wort aeration. They experienced a significant increase in esters, which is quite the opposite of your results. Did the decrease in esters come as a surprise to you? It did. We expected much more esters, as we found later. It might also be a fact um, that we had uh, a yeast that doesn't produce much esters from the beginning on. But the, I guess it's also because the um, acetyl-CoA co um, um, consumption of the yeast was much higher in our case because the, the growth was increased and therefore no esters could be built from the yeast. Your paper stated that conventionally laudered wort generally has less unsaturated fatty acids and sterols than yeast apparently needs. So the yeast has to synthesize the major amount of that, uh, of the required fatty acids itself. Talk a little bit more about that and uh, how aeration was affected during this study. Because of the high amounts of fatty acids, we don't have to aerate the word anymore that much as before. That's mainly because aeration is only necessary in the word that the yeast can produce its sterols that it needs for its membranes. If we have a lot of fatty acids already in the words, we don't have to. The yeast doesn't have to produce its own sterols. It can just take it up and use it. Therefore, we started to decrease um, our aeration and our words. Uh, until we ha only had one ppm in the whole uh, in the whole fermentation vessel, and it showed that th that there was no negative influence because of that. The yeast started faster its fermentation because the aeration, uh, the aerobic metabolism didn't have to take that long, so um, the fermentation started earlier, and therefore was the main fermentation also faster. Very good. So even with you had both lower fermentation temperature and uh, and less wort aeration, why why did you uh, choose to have a lower fermentation temperature on on the um, disc filtration ones? That was because we had some other trials before that, and the um, the yeast was that active that we had a so called boiling fermentation. And to reduce that effect, we started to go in with lower temperatures to have a smooth and controlled fermentation without any boiling. How do you see the disc filtration system perform over different beer styles? We are in a brewery right now that makes like 10 different beers. So we have a lot of variations in the brew house too. We have uh, a Bock beer with um, a first word concentration of about 27 degrees plateau, so pretty high. And we won't, we don't have any problems with this infiltration system to get it through. And this is one of the main advantages that we see. We can also add um, more than 50% of wheat for the wheat beer and still the filtration system has no problems. And this is why, especially for craft brewers or small breweries that have a lot of different brands and um, beer styles out there, um, we are very uh, interesting. So for those craft brewers out there who can't afford to install a fancy new brew house, do you think they're better off intentionally dragging some trube into their fermenters, supplementing clear worts with zinc or something else? Yes, I think so. Our studies show that it is totally okay if you don't separate 
the whole troop exactly from the liquid. And if you put some more of the solids into your fermentation vessel, your fermentation might improve. It's, of course, also important that you have the right things in your trip, like fatty acids and zinc, and that you haven't removed it already during the lottering. Um, but if you have still some fatty acids and zinc in there, just put it into your fermentation vessel and your fermentation will be better. <laughs> That was Magdalena Uschlager here on the Master Brewers podcast. You can read her article about the novel brew house design in the Master Brewers Technical Quarterly. Magdalena is also presenting a paper at the upcoming Brewing Summit. I'm really looking forward to the ASBC MBAA Brewing Summit coming up this August in San Diego. It only happens every four years, and it's not like any other conference you've attended. The Brewing Summit is 100% the science and technology of brewing. No pep rallies or business lectures, and you'll be surrounded by some of the smartest men and women in our industry. If you can only attend one conference in 2018, this should be it. Register now at MBAA.com. Just like that one day when we came around there Since there's that one thing